Lesson 6 The Grace of the Holy Spirit Objectives At the end of the session, the student will be able to reflect on what they know about grace, to define grace, sanctifying and actual grace, justification and sanctification, to enumerate the effects of sanctifying grace, to distinguish the similarities and differences of sanctifying grace and actual grace, and to assess how, as a seventh grader, one can live life to obtain happiness in heaven. Review Last week, we learned about living a Christian moral life through the practice of virtues, the three theological virtues, the four cardinal moral virtues, the Church as the mystical body of Christ, its members, and how the Church gives us the saints as models of heroes through the constant practice of virtues. We also learned about the relationship of authority, responsibility, and common good. Last week, we also learned that man is a social being with a social obligation to work for the common good. That is why the church gave us the corporal and spiritual works of mercy to practice the teachings of Jesus in order to lead us to perfect happiness. This week, we will learn about the grace of the Holy Spirit, the freely given and deserved gift of divine life shared with us. Think for a moment and reflect what you already know about grace. What do you know about sanctifying grace? Were you ever in a situation when you were in danger, but by some mysterious happenstance, you were saved by something or by someone? Can that be God's grace at work? What is grace? Grace is a freely given, undeserved gift of God sharing himself to man. Grace empowers us to love God who loved us first. Grace leads us to the right path to heaven. Grace is sharing in the intimacy enjoyed by the Blessed Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Trinity is the central mystery of our Christian faith, which involves a personal relationship with God and a free ascent to the truths God has revealed. The Holy Spirit enabled us to receive two kinds of grace, sanctifying grace and actual grace. The love of the Father with the Holy Spirit brought the Son to us to enjoy eternal happiness with Him through these graces. So why do we need grace? The need for grace, our salvation history. In the beginning of creation, man had God's life in him. But with the gifts of intellect and free will, he committed folly, a costly mistake with the ruinous outcome. Knowingly and decidedly, he chose to obey, disobey God and severed his relationship 
with the divine creator. We call this original sin. Mankind was punished for original sin, but when the right time came, God sent the promised Savior and through the Holy Spirit assumed a lowly form to repair the damaged relation committed by the first humans against God. Jesus the new Adam is the incarnate word of the Father, filled with the love of the Holy Spirit. With the ascent of Mary, the chosen woman preserved from original sin, the new Eve, the fulfillment of God's promise, Jesus Christ, walked and lived on earth. He reminded men of God's love and taught men the way back to the Father in heaven through the paschal mystery of his passion, death, resurrection, and ascension, Jesus restored our relationship with God. While on earth, Jesus instituted the sacraments, and through the sacrament of baptism, man receives an undeserved, freely given gift that wipes out the stain of the first folly. This gift is sanctifying grace. Like an indelible seal, sanctifying grace is a one-time gift that leaves a permanent claim to heaven through the sacrifice of Jesus. Through baptism, sanctifying grace marks us as heirs of heaven and children of God. In this life, through baptism, we are headed for heaven. Effects of original sin in us. It removed God's life in man, produced disorder in the body, blurred the mind, and incapacitated the power of the will. It forfeited our freedom from concupiscence. It stained our soul with an ugly mark that opened it to the grasp of evil. It broke man's intimate friendship with God so man lost his claim to everlasting happiness. It corrupted human nature, and Adam's transgression was inherited by all of his descendants, except one. Effects of Sanctifying Grace on the Soul it removes the stain of original sin, heals the soul, and restores us to holiness. It marks the person as God's child, a product of God's love. It plants the seeds of the theological virtues, faith, hope, and charity. It restores the right to inherit heaven a claim to happiness. It makes one a member of the mystical body of Christ, the Savior of humanity. It allows one to share in the merits of the saints, and it plants the seeds of many graces received through the practice of other virtues. Actual grace, the blessing we receive as a gift of friendship from God in our day-to-day -day life is actual grace. Actual grace is a supernatural boost to use the intellect and free will to continue having the sanctifying grace in us. You are in a long line in the grocery and another cashier opens up to check you out first. 
an actual grace at work? When opportunity offers you a way to earn more graces, that's actual grace at work. You are in a tour. Someone left a bag at a previous stop. You see it and realize it has a driver's identification. What you do next is an opportunity to practice a virtue. That's actual grace working. What will you do? In a life of friendship with God, Undeserved and freely given gifts abound. With the graces available, life is meant to be a happy journey back to God's presence in heaven. Similarities of Sanctifying and Actual Grace Both sanctifying grace and actual grace come from God's love for us. Both are offered to us and we are free to accept or reject it. Both are undeserved. We have not done anything to earn it. Both are made available to us because of Jesus' assuming human nature to take on to himself humanity's punishment for our sins. Both are free we do not have to pay for it. Both can be lost by mortal sin. Differences Sanctifying and Actual Grace Sanctifying grace is a one-time gift. Actual grace can be received as many times as one avails of it. Sanctifying grace leaves an indelible mark on us and remains in us forever. Actual grace are in us until we lose it by freely and decisively rejecting God's love. Sanctifying grace is already in us after baptism. Actual grace enhances it as we receive the other sacraments. While both can be lost by mortal sin, sanctifying grace acts to help us regain God's love back through the sincere repentance and reparation in the sacrament of reconciliation. Justification God, a supreme being, was insulted by man, a lowly creature. This great offense caused the good relationship to break, so only a supreme being can atone for that wrongdoing. At the same time, man has to take on the responsibility to appease God. When Jesus Christ, the Son of God, humbled himself to assume the lowly form of a human being, he saved mankind. Only through the Paschal Mystery, Jesus Christ's life, passion, death, resurrection, and glorious ascension, did humanity regain access to eternal happiness. With Jesus' life offered to God for humanity's mistake, those born in the past, present, and future are given the opportunity to gain back the inheritance of eternal happiness. With grace, the seed of God's gift, man now has a clear direction to his quest for eternal happiness. Yet man has to live well on earth to end his life deserving heaven after his journey. In his teachings, Christ showed us the way and through justification, the process of making one just, man renews his loving relationship with the triune God through baptism. Justification is the gift of new life in Christ 
that we receive at baptism through sanctifying grace. With the cleansing power of baptism and the gift of sanctifying grace, we have been justified to claim our inheritance to eternal happiness at death. Sanctification In this temptation-filled life on earth, the only way to remain in that state of continuous friendship with the Triune God is to reflect the love of the Father by following the teachings of the Incarnate Son and working with the Holy Spirit. In doing so, we glorify God in our lives. Sharing in the Life of Grace Original sin deprived us of our entire claim to God's friendship. God does not owe us anything. With sanctifying grace in baptism, we are gifted with a second chance to claim happiness, but only in working with the Holy Spirit do we share in the life of grace. Sanctification is the work of the Holy Spirit that unites us by faith to Jesus' saving actions in His passion, death, and resurrection. We become sharers of God's life through the work of the Holy Spirit. We merit, in other words, we get to be worthy or we deserve the reward we worked for by living in grace and cooperating with the directives of the Holy Spirit in following the teachings of Jesus, the process of justification and sanctification must continuously work in our lives on earth to be happy forever. Our Church Makes a Difference the Church guides us to live a life of grace by welcoming our contribution of time, treasure, and talents. Many committees are working to help members live a life of dignity for those deprived of resources. We can share our blessings by being active members of these committees. What difference does faith make in our life? We can live a life in continuous loving relationship with God by accepting the responsibility of treating others with dignity and respect. Remember, God dwells in each person. Look for the goodness in others. Accept people for who they are. Affirm the positive qualities first. Use constructive criticisms if you have to. Do random acts of kindness. Read pages 66 to 67 of your textbook.